everyone and welcome to this presentation that is part two of the three video series that make up week two's required readings. This presentation is going to be about defining social problems. So let's go over some key concepts that can help us understand what exactly a social problem is. Uh, there's actually three key concepts that we'll go over and what we're interested in is the difference between them. So what is the difference between a social need versus a social condition? And what makes a social condition become a social problem? It's important to understand the differences between these three concepts because social welfare policies and the programs that come from them are designed to address social problems. As social workers, that's what we're interested in is uh, addressing social problems, but not everything is considered a problem that we as a society have to do something about. So how do we know if something is actually a need, a condition, or a problem? So we'll go over each one separately. So the first is social need, and there's many different types of needs, but generally speaking, it's the lack of some sort of resource and is experienced by a significant number of people and this resource is considered desirable, necessary, and essential to a certain quality standard of life. For example, we all need housing in terms of shelter of some kind. Most of us need employment to survive. These are all needs that we have. And they're social needs because they're experienced by uh, large portion of society, if not the majority, in terms of employment, but definitely everyone needs housing of some kind. And these things are considered necessary, essential, and sometimes desirable in order to sometimes just survive or to have a, a certain quality standard of life. Many of us have different uh, types of needs. And I think the best way to kind of think about needs in general is to use Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, this is something that you'll go over in more detail in your human behavior and social environment class. Uh, so I won't spend too much time here on it, but if you want more information, Google is your friend. Uh, and I, I am too, in the sense that you can ask me as well. Okay, so let's go over his hierarchy of needs, which is uh, demonstrated by this triangle. At the bottom, we have physiological needs like food, water, oxygen, rest. So the housing I mentioned earlier would go under this physiological need in terms of shelter. Okay, the next one is safety, which has to do with security and stability, but also not having to worry about threats and chaos in the environment. Next, we have belongingness and love which involves intimacy and affection, both from family and partners, but also from friends. Then we have self-esteem, which has to do with self-respect, a sense of achievement or productivity, a sense that one is worthwhile. And at the top, then, we have a sense that one is actually fulfilling one's potential, and that's referred to as self-actualization. So these are all needs that we as human beings have, but in terms of importance to one's life at any given time, that is dependent on a variety of factors such as culture, wealth, social status, etc. So for example, safety might be more of an immediate need to a homeless individual or for a child in an abusive home versus someone who has shelter in the form of housing or a child who's living in a non-abusive home. So the bottom line is that these are all needs that we have, but the relative importance will uh, depend on various factors. So then what takes something from a need into a condition? So that lack in resources, all of that um, information about social needs becomes in this case for a condition, a state of being. And again, it has to be experienced by a significant number of people and at this point, it requires assistance, intervention, and services, okay? So let me just stop here and, and clarify. So everything I've said before about social need applies here in terms of it being a, then becoming a social condition, but the question is what makes it a social condition is that that need lasts for 
such a long period that it's a, it becomes a state of being. And then at that point, it requires some sort of intervention. The person cannot do it on their own. All of those institutions we went over in the previous video, the social institutions, the economy, the polity, family, religious, etc. Uh, those institutions are not able to meet this need. So now it's become a condition that requires intervention. The question becomes is does it require intervention from society in the form of a policy or a law? And that's really the question about who is responsible and that's then a question about who should do something about it. So should it be family? Should it be uh, charities? Or again, is this something that society needs to do? So let's take the example of homelessness. It does reflect a need, again, housing, and it becomes for some people, a state of being homeless for a long period of time. And those folks who are homeless are considered in need of assistance. But again, we have to ask ourselves the question of who then provides that assistance? Is it a family problem? So therefore family or maybe even charities can assist? Or is it a societal slash social problem, which I know I haven't defined that yet, but just go with me. Um, which implies that society is responsible and therefore society should do something about it. And what are what is society going to do about it? There's going to be some policy solutions that are needed, policies that create programs, that create services, all of the social welfare services uh, that you'll be learning about and engaging it at some point. And that leads us to the question of what makes something a social problem versus a social condition. And we're really asking, okay, if we have a condition like homelessness, oops, but when is society going to accept responsibility and do something about it? Okay. When society accepts responsibility and tries to do something about it, then the condition has now uh, is now being viewed as a social problem. So again, it is a fine line, but a condition is something that people view as not being the fault of society. And because there's that view, then of course society doesn't need to do anything about it. So what makes it a problem? So this lack, again, this condition this, uh, it is an adverse condition or circumstance, again, experienced by a significant number of people. So we're taking everything we just said about uh, social needs and becoming social conditions. And now that condition is related to other conditions that are perceived as pathological or deviant or problematic. For example, poverty. Okay? It's a social need in the sense that we all need money in this society to survive. It's a condition because a large portion of our society experiences poverty for a, a, a certain long period of time. So it becomes a state of being for many people. And in some cases, it leads to crime, right? like stealing and things like that. I'm not saying all impoverished people steal. I'm just saying that poverty is related to crime, to delinquency, to um, uh, not finishing uh, high school, things like that. So there's all, all these other negative consequences to what was once just considered a social condition. So think of it as a checklist when you're trying to figure out is something a condition or a problem. Let's take autism, for example. This is a condition that some estimates suggest one to 50 or one, I mean, one in 50 or one in uh, 70 children. So that's a huge uh, part of our child population. But is there a lack or a need of, of something that, that is important to a quality standard of life? Um, some may argue yes, some may argue no. So we'll just leave that one open for now. Is it experienced by a lot of people? Yes, a lot of children. 
Does it have negative consequences? Um, sure, if it's untreated, then there's um, uh, negative consequences for the child and for the family, but is it going to lead to some sort of pathological or deviant behavior like crime, et cetera? Uh, and the answer is no. So in that sense, is, is there something in the structures of society that is allowing this condition to continue so that there's policy solutions that we need in order to treat autism? And in this case, no. So it's much easier to think about something like homelessness then as a social problem, because it definitely uh, describes a lack in terms of a, the need for housing. It's experienced by half a million people, though that's the current estimates nationally. It is related to negative consequences, right? Crime is related to homelessness. And sure, there are policy solutions, housing first programs, things like that. So that if society takes responsibility for uh, lack of affordable housing, for unemployment, et cetera, then there are policy solutions that can address that responsibility. Another thing I want to say about social conditions versus social problems is that they really have to do also with how we perceive that need and how we perceive the people who have that need and how we perceive <laughs> whether or not society should take responsibility. And what's interesting and hopeful is that our views change over time. Our societal views about marriage, about the LGBTQ community, about child abuse, um, domestic violence, etc. Those views have changed over time, and that's very hopeful. You know, if you think about just you know 30 years ago or so, um, you know, a, a man could rape his wife, and that was not illegal. Uh, you know, until, it wasn't until the 60s that people started to view child abuse as something that society should intervene with. So when we say views have changed, really that has to do with values changing over time. Really that has to do with values changing over time. And values are a very big part of policy decisions, as you'll note in the Applebaum reading that is required for week two. The next video in part three of this series will go over values in much more detail. So that's it for this presentation. Thank you for watching, but it's not the end. It's just the end for now. Make sure you go to part three. Thanks again.